This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. and gentlemen once again yeah I, it's Stephen Kravitz ladies and gentlemen you can see his name down there you know I, I, I gotta say something it's really nice of you to do these things with me oh yeah it's my pleasure of course it's my yeah, pleasure yeah, I, I love doing them with you but then again I have no life so this is a pleasure and you have no life so it's a pleasure for you I had no life now I'm a working man oh yeah you're 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 at Lowe's I'm at Lowe's. I'm the cashier. Price on aisle five, please. <laughs> do you ever do that? Do you ever do price check? Uh, I haven't yet. Oh, because you have a little book there. Right. That you go through. Right. You know what I'm wondering? I, every store you go to, if they don't know the price, especially a grocery store, they look it up in this, this folder they've got. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, why don't they just put that on the computer? You know? Uh, the computers aren't that sophisticated at Lowe's. Oh, really? Right. What are they, uh, Amigas? No, they're, they're pretty <laughs> archaic. They, they need to be upgraded, but they won't do it. Do you figure there are other Lowe's that are more updated? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there are. Yeah, but I would think Lowe's, which is a big company, would always be on top of the technology. Yeah, you would think that. Yeah. Hmm. But then again, they're pretty much hammer and nail. Well, that's true. Right? Yeah. I mean, when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, they're hammer and nail. Uh, but uh, that that's uh, that's amazing. Uh, they're, they, they don't have, they're not up to date with all this stuff. They do their best. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, look, it's a job. I'm, I'm saving up enough money to go visit a friend in Memphis. So it's it's gas money. It's gonna get me to Memphis to hang out with this girl I know. Oh. So it it's all worth it. Yeah, and then you're gonna come visit me on the way back, aren't you? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know it, what's nice is it's just a little extra money for you, and plus right. plus is one other factor. It gives you something to do a couple of days a week. Right, right, right. You Although know? I have to get up way early. Like I have to get up at five thirty in the morning. Oh boy, you know I see these things. I'm thinking about going after these casting calls for extras, just just right. just to have some. I've told you about this, just to have something to do. And then I look at some of them, and they go, "Well, we're going to be filming from one o'clock in the morning till five. Right. And I go, "I don't think I can stay up that late. Right. <laughs> you know? Although well, I when, saw, you used to, when you used to do radio, what time did you get up? Well, I I. Look, I did uh, the morning show. Right. And I had to get up at... Uh, I cut it close. Show started at 6. I knew how long it took to drive to the station. Uh, I I always had to put on some decent clothes. I couldn't put on, you know, what I was wearing while I was sleeping and just throw on a pair of shorts or something because we had a studio audience right right we had a big studio audience so i laid out my clothes ahead of time so i would get up at five o'clock and i would get there while they they usually, usually had music they played before the show started they play a couple right. of songs and then they play my theme and i had it all time so i'd get in there before the music was over but that's how how close i cut it because i didn't like getting up that early no i bet not and what time would you have us on at seven? I have you guys on at seven? Yeah, I do the first hour at six with just you know, my newswoman and right. You know, Bubbles I think was on the show at the time, and uh, you know, we just batted around for an hour, played some music, blah blah blah, and then started with the comedians at seven. Uh, but what I did was. I went to bed about 11. Now you say, well, you only got six hours sleep. What I did is I napped in the afternoon. 
I would take a two hour nap that started at two o'clock and went to four. All right. And, and I'd always sleep exactly two hours. But oh, if, really? But if I didn't get to sleep at exactly two o'clock in the afternoon, I couldn't get my nap. Somehow my body clock or something. What are you, Pavlov's dog? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it, it, it really, you know, kind of makes you, kind of makes you uh, uh, a slave to the clock. But... Right. So, so it, it, I knew I had to be home at two o'clock in the afternoon if I was going to get my nap. If I didn't get my Talk nap. Talk about a creature of habit. Well, I mean, these were habits I got into because I had the habit of having to do a show every morning. Right. And right. you had to somehow accommodate for that. I One time when I was doing a morning show, like in, I think it was in Houston, I came up with a theory that if you didn't go to sleep, at night and made the show you the end of your day right that you could then go home go to sleep sleep eight hours and then again you're doing this thing with the show is the light didn't work didn't work didn't work at all no, I, I, I was sadly mistaken i yeah, was no kidding. dog tired by the time i got to the last hour okay it was good in theory though well, the only thing I didn't like about doing a morning show is I'm never 100% when I first wake up. I've always been, you know, uh, right now I'm that way because I just got up, what, three hours ago, something like that, four hours ago. And I'm just, to get up? I got up at 10 this morning, you know. Yeah, so did I because I didn't have to work today. I slept until 10.30. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I just, I, 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 uh, I've been, I feel groggy lately, you know, when I get up. And I'm going to take a nap after this. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, how long do you sleep when you sleep? Um, when I have to get up for work, about six hours, if mm -hmm. I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you, so what, how much sleep do you get last night? Oh, last night? Yeah. This is not a way. I got, I got, because I didn't have to get up, and I, I, I woke up a few times, just never got out of bed. Yeah. So I guess I was in bed all total, probably around eight hours. Okay, and so now you feel like you have to take a nap. Yeah. Okay, I don't feel so bad now. You know. Well. Huh? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, when I'm at work, I'm on my feet for the whole yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's that's tiring. I mean, you wouldn't think it's tiring to stand around, but it is. Don't th it, they should have a stool for you? No. 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 It's all standing. Oh boy. I just got some good inserts for my shoes, so we'll see if that helps. Again, this is old people trying to work. Like <laughs> I don't want I, I don't want to have to take a job that starts at two o'clock in the morning. You know. Right. Like I just saw a uh, a casting notice to be an extra on Succession, the big HBO show. I thought that might be nice, and they said it's a night shoot, and I went, nah, no, <laughs> you know. And, and it gets really cold at night. And they only pay. You know what they pay? They pay a hundred. This job paid a hundred and eighty-seven dollars SAG scale. Right. Okay, for an extra, which I suppose isn't bad. No, that's not bad. You know. But they would pay another hundred to you for taking the COVID test the day before, because you had to go in the day before to get the COVID test. Right, so you got paid for a day. So you got paid a hundred dollars for the COVID test, yeah. So huh. I figured, well, that's not bad, 287, you know, and then I think it was two nights work. So I could have walked out of there with about $500, you know. Yeah, no kidding. And I'm thinking, maybe I should do these things. I mean, they all of them. Why say, not? All Why not? Say, Give you something to do. All they all of them say like ages, you know, eighteen to ninety nine. Right. And I go, oh, okay, you know. But then again, I might not, you know. So there's some for Mrs. Maisel, and uh, all the all the stuff they shoot in New York, you know. Right. And lots of notices. If I go over here, 
to my mail right now. I bet I got two or three of them. Uh, here we got one. And uh, that's all. Only one now. Oh, they probably put them all up in the morning. But the one that I got is for the Union, whatever that is. You know, some show called The Union. No idea. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, I wonder if you get Union scale for The Union. Yeah. Uh, I would so, imagine you yeah. do. Let's see. If it's, you know, you only do Union shoots. Yeah. Oh, you, you well, you, you don't only want to. You want you don't want to do things that aren't SAG after it. Right. Uh, but uh, I think it would say, because uh, although there are some you can do that that you know it's it's legitimate. The union won't be mad at you for taking the job. But uh, I don't know. It's what what did it say? It didn't have the price here. It just said paid. That's all. Overnight shoot in Kearney, North Dakota. Oh God! Why did I get that? Uh, New Jersey. Excuse me. My I'm I haven't got my glass on. New Jersey. Where the hell is Kearney, New Jersey? So I got to get over to Kearney, New Jersey at 2.30 in the morning or something. Yeah. Right, and then freeze all night because you don't get a trailer. Oh, right. You don't get a trailer. Do you? Well, it won't be freezing overnight this time of year. Well, it'll get cold if do you're you, just standing around. Do you get to use craft services if you're an extra? No. Craft services is the food, folks. No? No, you get a meal, but you eat after the, uh, the, uh... The, the hoi polloi. Right, the uh, hoity-toity. The hoity-toities. So the hoity-toities do their food, but I go to the same place to get the food, right? I go right. to craft services. Right. right. Right, but there's also craft services where they bring around food while you're on the set. Oh. To keep you going, and that you don't get. Oh, I see. See, here's the other thing I don't. It always bothered me a little bit. This building I'm in, can't, they can't do it now because they got it all up in scaffolding and stuff like that. But a lot of things were shot here in this building. Uh, oh, is that right? Yeah, that, that Mozart show over on, uh, um, I think it was uh, Amazon Prime. Okay. Uh, was all filmed here, you know. Uh, quite a bit and they would come in and they would do their shoot for the day and they would set up a craft services table right and it was very nice they did that but you know they're impinging upon us we live here so right. it kind of creates an obstacle for us and it creates a, a certain amount of noise and so on and so forth so why not invite us to join craft services and get some of their food wouldn't that be nice? After well, all, well, if they were using your apartment, they would. No, they're not using our apartment. But uh, I can let them use our apartment now, though, because we finally got a lease. Oh, you did. Finally got a physical lease. So yeah, but I you're paying nothing a month. Well, for the time being, they're undoubtedly going to appeal it. Uh, but and I may have to pay the difference after the appeal between the 500 we're paying and what the difference over the The market time. value is. Well, well, no, not market value. That's not what we're going by. We're going by, our argument is that if it's not 500, it should be about 800. So that's not bad. Yeah, no, still, but why is that? Because we uh, uh, the, the way in which the judge figured out what the rent should be is what the rent was in 2003, the stabilized rent lease price for this apartment right. in 2003. They could argue that really we have to go to 2010, but then they can only go by the highest price that anybody was paying, or maybe it was the lowest price anyone was paying in this, uh, uh, what do they call it? You know, it's like we're, we're apartment I, so all the I's Right. up and down the building the lowest price or it was the highest price either way how it, many apartments in your building oh they're about 200 i think in your building in the building yeah yeah oh really yeah uh but there are eight here and then there are four or three on each not every level i don't know but anyway the point i'm making is that we can argue that that should be the rate 
whatever was the lowest rent in this right. in this lot uh, line. That's the term. Are all the two hundred departments going through what you're going through? No, no, but in the line, so that would make it eight hundred a month, eight hundred and fifty a month. So we pay the difference between the five hundred and the eight fifty. No big deal. If, right. if he gets what they wanted for this apartment, which is twenty two fifty or twenty two twenty five, oh, then probably I, more than that. No, no, no. That's that's the actual rent. That's what they they listed the rent as to the judge, uh, and uh, the judge said, "Well, because you didn't, you know, you didn't do all the right stuff back then. The 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 amount of money that has to be paid on the apartment, the legitimate." Uh, rental for this apartment it gets rolled back because you didn't do the things you had to do to right. constantly upgrade the price. So anyway, what I'm saying is we could probably pay the difference between that and that or the 2225, which would be quite a bit of money, but I I can I can scrape it up. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh but uh it you know, who knows? So far they haven't even they just said they were going to appeal. And they have six months to actually file the appeal, and it's almost six months, and they haven't filed the appeal, I don't think. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you know. Maybe they're just writing it off. I don't think they like to do that, you know. But the rental they would get out of this, even at the high price, is low for this building. But it's... If the market price is, does, does not in New York necessarily determine what an apartment is worth. It's right. the rent stabilized price. And it, this is right. a rent stabilized apartment. And that means it you know, only goes up a certain amount. But they have to appeal it. Appeals don't usually work. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't but, know that. But uh, appeals court generally likes to side with the judge in the original case. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Unless they see that it's completely unwarranted, but the the landlords did something to the judge in our case. I won't say what it was. That is quite onerous. Uh, well, they oh really? Yeah, yeah. Somebody sent him a letter threatening him from the landlord. Oh really? And the, he list he listed that in the final determination. He said, "I want for transparency. I want you to know this went on." Okay, and then he went on and gave us the apartment for six hundred for five hundred dollars a month. Uh, so a judge in the appeals court is going to see that, right? Because it's in the decision, right? And the question is, how will he feel about it, right? You know, will he say, "Well, screw them," you know? Right. I mean, they they threaten the judge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, what do they think they were going to gain by that? The stupidest move I've ever seen anybody make. And I've seen the, the, the letters he sent, and it was, they were terrible. You know, oh, I know people, and we'll get you thrown out as a judge, and blah, 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 that kind of thing. And you're not supposed to do that. No. You know, his lawyer, after he found out about it, told him, don't send any more, and he sent one more. So he's an idiot. Somewhere along the line, somebody's an idiot here, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. But I'm glad he was an idiot because I think it benefited us. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if the judge would have come up with a different feeling, but uh, but he said, you know, I want you to know this. And it's in the deter the, the, the judge's uh, uh, determination. And uh, uh, this is something that the appeals court would see. And I think he also put it in there so they would see it. Right. You know. Oh, I'm sure he would. Yeah. So anyway, that, 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 uh, that's where we are. But we have a lease, and we have a lease for 500 a month, which is hilarious. Which yeah. is ridiculous. Well, it's not ridiculous if they broke the law. Right. You know? and, and the judge determined that they had, that they hadn't adequate, adequately uh, determined the rent because they never re uh, went for the rent stabilized price anywhere along the line. Okay. See, and that that, that was wrong of them. And that, right. that he just rolled it back to where it was at 2003 when this whole thing would have started. So that's, that's uh, are you learning anything about law here? 
Yeah, a little bit. I'm, See, I'm, you know, I'm, in New York, folks, in case you're watching this and you're scratching your head, um, we have a thing called uh, rent stabilization. It's maybe one of the few places in the country where this act, I think it does exist in other cities, but in a different form. Right, and, right. And if you have a rent stabilized apartment, it can only be raised by a certain amount every year and so on and so forth. I think it's 4%. Something like that. Maybe, I think it's even less than that in New York. Is it? Yeah. I know, it, it's just like a, oh, what, what's it called? Yeah. Um. I forget. Well, here's here's something that, that's interesting. I, my lawyer, who is uh, deals in his law, his field of law, is uh, landlord tenant law. Right. Okay. He said. Oh, rent control. It's called in other cities. Well, rent control. Yeah, rent control here means a different thing. Rent control right. is better than stabilization. Uh, oh really? It's it's an old one, and if you've got it, they can't move you out of that apartment. Right. And when right. you when you die, you can will that apartment to somebody. Oh really? To to a to a uh, to a uh, uh, a child or you know family member or whatever. Right. But anyway, what happened was is that uh, uh, my lawyer said. When he goes to conventions, legal conventions, and says he's a tenant landlord attorney, they uh, although they know what it is by the title, they've never heard of it before because right. it doesn't exist in other cities because they don't have the... Here we have a lot of laws and a lot of landlords who are crooks in this town. And it's a major thing for him. That's his entire practice. You know. Oh, really? You know, he made a hundred thousand dollars off of us. You know, so are it, you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was paid out over ten years or nine years, but geez, you know, still and, that's a lot of money. And it ain't over yet, but we didn't pay right. any rent in that time. So if you think about how much that cost and how much it right. cost for us to pay off the guy who lived here, it still only comes to about eighteen hundred bucks a month. You know, which is nothing to this place it's 2500 square feet right it's a big place i don't want to say it's nothing it's everything folks this is only worth 500 a month okay All right. <laughs> you know sure it is well i gotta say that because i i don't want them to think that i'm mocking them i got a deal but no god forbid i'm trying to think did i ever pay yeah when i first came to new york I had an apartment in the Bronx, very nice one, big apartment, uh, for three hundred dollars a month when I first came here, and that was in. Oh God, I think that was in '69. Yeah, and it was three hundred dollars. So you can imagine how much rents have gone up when this apartment, for instance, rent stabilized price would be twenty, twenty two, twenty five. Right. So rents have gone up precipitously you know it's, no kidding all, all, all over the country yeah. rents are outrageous yeah, well they of course are outrageous and if you go into the grocery store I mean I, I it's getting to the point where I'm going this is ridiculous you know I bought, right. a, I bought a rack of ribs the other day that normally cost me 10 bucks 20 bucks okay Marjorie wow. went and got a roasting chicken how much do you think a roasting chicken cost no idea. Try 26 bucks. Oh, really? Now, isn't chicken the cheapest thing you can buy at a store? Supposedly. I'm not ask. I shouldn't ask you because you're not doing checkout at a supermarket. You're doing it at right. Lowe's. But I bet your prices have gone up. Oh, people complain every day about the prices. Yeah. They say, how come it's so much? And it's like, look, I don't make the prices. I just ring it up. Yeah. You know, they, they think I can say I'm the one who's who's raised the price. Oh. It's like, no. Well, yeah. No. It, it's almost time for us to go, so you could have answered that, actually. Nah. <laughs> what is it, another robocall? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. It's, it's because I have a California phone number, I get a lot of calls from California. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Because my SAG card is still in Los Angeles, I get a lot of those... Uh, 
extra calls on my email from California. They're all California. Well, it's not SAG. It's SAG after. I have to tell you that because you and I belong to the same union now. Right. And I'm in the I'm in the New York. Uh, yeah, I should change it to Boston. Yeah. Oh, they have one in Boston. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, listen, I gotta go. Well, you gotta That's go it, too. Huh? huh? That's it, huh? That's it. Huh? Wave, <laughs> wave goodbye, Steve. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. See you next week. Oh, man. Hmm. Hello. How are you? I was up early today. Uh, up early. Uh, only got six and a half hours sleep, so I've been, like, loopy all day. Uh, why? Because I had to go to the dentist. You know, I figured it was time. I finally had to go ahead and get my teeth cleaned. Uh, yes, Alex, you had to get your teeth cleaned. Yep, yep. You know, I haven't had my teeth cleaned in a while. So I decided to get my teeth cleaned, and all the toofies are now shining. See? Hmm? Except I got a cavity down here that she's got to fix. I uh, see that little darkness. Actually, that's a shadow. That's not really a cavity. So. But anyway, so uh, so she's going to uh, do a little little work on me next week. And there may be some other things, too, but stuff I'm going to turn down. So, yeah. Come on. At my age, I ain't doing, I ain't doing too much dental work. And I'll tell you why. Because as you get older, you begin to think, hey, what a waste of my money. You're like, let's say they want to do, uh, oh, I don't know, a restoration somewhere in my mouth right now. I'm 82 years old. I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? You get it? Okay. I mean, it's just like, I I want to get my money's worth of I'm going to put money out for that. So, mm. 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 Well, there's some people trying to call the program, and I probably should... Uh, should uh, let them join here. Let me see here. Let me admit all. There are only two of them, actually. Um, and uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's Brian. Hello, Brian. How are you? Good. Hey, we got Steve the Trucker on tonight. Yeah, but is, your, is that yours? Yeah, that was mine. Yeah. Uh, and Trucker Steve is uh, we. It, what is he in his truck? He's on cruise control, maybe. On the road again. Yeah, that's good. Well, we'll see what the story is with him. Uh, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay. That uh, that show I told you about, that Netflix show yeah. about the about drugs. Mm -hmm. They did. I watched the Celsilbin, uh, Celsilbin, um today. Yeah. Uh, and they they talk about how they're using it for cancer treatments and stuff. Like you were saying that Ronnie took it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Every time he was talking about it, I thought of Ronnie. Uh, and, uh, all the episodes are up, by the way. That's Netflix. Uh, there are only four. Oh, there are only three or four episodes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I watched. Uh, began to watch the first one. I found it a little dull. Yeah. I, I, I you know, I, I don't know. I didn't like the way they were presenting it. Mm -hmm. But uh, whatever we're going to yeah. hear from uh, from uh, um, uh, Charlie tonight, because he said he's been on the road for two days. Um, but he is in the chat room, so he's alive and well there. Let me, oh, wait a minute! Here he is. I just uh, as I as I speak, here comes the devil right here. And Jeff is here. We're worried about Jeff. I um, I went swimming yesterday. Wait a minute! In Charlie. the hot. Wait a minute, Charlie. Sideways. Uh oh, what do I have to do? Uh, I think you have to turn. Think yesterday. There you go. Uh, well, I had it the way I had it yesterday, and that was sideways. Oh, oh, really? And today it didn't, uh, it didn't want to. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a matter of how you. What are you using? Your iPhone or are you using? A... Yeah, I use my iPhone. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I don't have a camera on my and, and, laptop. And Ray's got it. Got it. He's he's sideways now. Ray, there you Earth. go. There you go. 
Ray, Ray's always trying to do something different from everybody else. Enjoying the Cal California weather. Really? Oh, yeah, okay. enjoy it. Yeah. I'll hang up soon so I don't screw it up. I just wanted to say hello. You just wanted to say hello. Hello, Mike. Okay. Uh, are you going to be home anytime soon where you could call no, us? No, not for another hour. Oh, well, okay. All right. Okay, well, it's nice that you called. Mm. Oh, Here comes Steve. There we go. We got him full, full on there. Yeah. Oh, what? What are you bicycling for? The temperature is so fucking hot, even in Northern oh. California. Not Northern California. Oh, it's like seventy-five or oh, seventy. Oh, really? I hate you. Yeah. I hate. That's you. disgusting. I mm. hate you. No, and like sixty-five. Hmm? Wait a minute. What were you going to say, Ray? It's about 60 where I am right now. It's kind of cold. Oh, fuck all of you. San Jose <laughs> is uh, 73 with uh, yeah, zero humidity and 41% uh, humidity. Yeah, well, it's 88 here. So, you know. And did I hear Adrian there? Did I hear her? Well, anyway, there's... Oh, uh, the kids are playing games. There's yeah. trucker... I just turned the camera off. Oh, okay. There's Trucker Steve, by the way. Hey, Steve. Oh, wow. Hey. hey oh, Steve. wow. Hey. So you're, you're back. So you're, you're back. Oh, wait a minute. So, wait a minute. You've so, got your... Somebody... I think Trucker Steve has his audio on. Has our show on. Can you hear us, Trucker Steve? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. Hey. We can't really see you because we, your face is. Yeah. Are you back in the truck again? Uh, not long haul. I'm running local. You're running local. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, how does how does that fare with the whole kidney situation? Is that? Huh? It's fine. I do my dialysis in the morning. Mm -hmm. Eight a.m. to twelve. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday. Saturday. Yeah. I had it this morning. Yeah. And I started work at two o'clock. Oh, okay. That's good. So it's keeping you busy. Yeah. Yeah. At twelve hundred dollars a month on disability yeah. doesn't cut it. We have a very special mm -hmm. guest here tonight. Adrian is on with us. Hello, Adrian. How are you? Hi. Yeah. She uh, she's she's such a little ham. You know, can you say something? <laughs> How's your lip healing? It looks better. Good. Yeah. She doesn't look like an old hag like she looked a couple of days ago. And then, you know, I had to take her to dance class and it looks like, you know, we beat her or something. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? The yeah. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, I was scared with her lip there. It's pretty pretty crazy yeah, but. yeah so how old is she now she's six she'll be seven um october 21st when did she first start coming on the show how old was she she was five wasn't she yeah yeah maybe even yeah wow so i've been on for like three years since covid started so yeah yeah so maybe four yeah yeah four is what i thought yeah, i think four yeah me too i have to go bed <laughs> bye 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 close the door turn on my light <laughs> yeah, oh, she's doing good. You know what I what I find so wonderful about that about her hmm. is how much she adores you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're daddy's girl. Yeah. She's daddy's yeah. girl. Not you. Yeah, you know when <clears throat> maybe maybe you know others have felt this but yeah when you're when you're a man and you have your first kid you want a boy you want a man you know all this stuff <laughs> and then tiffany you know she had two already and she said no you'll want a girl and then when she was born as a girl then she said you know you this the boys are closer to the fathers and the you know the the you know sons are closer to the moms and so yeah so it's like it's like that sons are closer to the moms really yeah yeah why is yep. that oh you say that's true right charlie yeah why is that 
I was never close to my mom. I was closer to my father. But then again, I was an only child. So maybe that affects it somehow. But uh, did, why, do you, you had a daughter, didn't you, Charlie? I have two daughters. Two daughters, and you have a son? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And he's closer to his mom, and they're both closer to me. Wow. Yeah. Is there any kind of, I don't know, I, I, because I never went through this experience, is there a jealousy that goes on between the two parents when they find out that, you know, that certain kids are more, you know, like, you know, Adrian is absolutely adores you, Brian, you know, is Tiffany jealous of that? <laughs> yeah, she does get jealous. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Because she asked her questions like, who do you love more? So why do you ask her that question? You know, I, I take her to dance, you know, three times a week. And she goes, you know, I take her everywhere all the time while Tiffany's working. So who do you think she's going to feel a little bit closer to? Well, so. yeah, yeah. It's like um, um, who, when you ask a dog who he likes best, I guess it's the person that feeds him. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Oh, here she comes again. She's coming in to work. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. She makes this place. Oh, she's going to be dancing. She's not. Oh, oh, oh she's going to be dancing? Yeah. What is with this? What is Adrian, with this? What is Adrian, this? Do you, want, do you want your own show? Alex will give you your own show. You can just dance all day. <laughs> we should do yeah. a thing called Adrian Dances. And we can just yeah. make we can just make a video of her doing any kind of little stupid dance thing she wants to do, and we'll just put it up. Yeah, but you're gonna get jealous when she gets more likes than you. <laughs> you know something? I, I perfectly will accept it. Hey man, come on! No, really, really, really. Where, really, what is this? Get out! Where, where, <laughs> <laughs> hey, <what's my> <laughs> <laughs> where does she get her da- where she get her dance moves from tiktok is, is, Ooh, is, speaking is, of tiktok the F- ftc or fcc today asked apple and google to take that off and they're not going to allow it to be broadcast in the united states wow uh, people with VPNs, I guess, will be able to get around it. But well, I mean, uh, that, why, why, why can't we? I don't know. You, now we're now we're acting like China. Yeah, well, I think it, they think it's because China is spying on us using TikTok. Probably. Have you ever seen TikTok? <laughs> yeah. It's How really... is that spying on us? Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, but then they have COVID, and because they have all their you know, following techniques or whatever, you know, they squish COVID like that because they know where people are and they know who they're with and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I didn't hear about that with TikTok. Oh, TikTok has a news service too, which of course pisses off our news service. So, because it's a bunch of it, ha- it has a news service? Yeah, you can, you can Let subscribe me... to somebody's TikTok that gives news or something i i don't know i haven't got that okay far i want to find out about this i didn't hear about it and uh, Come on, tony tony do you know you on tiktok all the time you know i don't know i go there for some news but not all the time <laughs> you go there for the tits don't you i don't i don't go i actually only go there once in a while if it's a funny video <laughs> okay i don't, so, think, I don't I know there's a lot of sometimes. women's tits but tell me are you going there for the men's tits no i mean i'll just go there for the funny videos if somebody sends it to me some of them have some there's on youtube well, i just went to i just went to news the news mm-hmm. on TikTok. you know they, they you go put TikTok in and then you put in the news and there is nothing here well tony sees it no i didn't see anything on the news that they were going to take it down or anything i did a google search oh. yeah I, I don't see it yeah mm-hmm. all right so mm-hmm. you're wrong about that they did try a couple of years ago, you know, but it, it does, does, does Adrian watch TikTok? Yeah, she still has an account. She's almost banned. They say one more bad video and they're going to What do you mean her. one more bad video? They have community standards, you know, and she's, she's think, violating she, the community standards. <laughs> he already got one of my emails banned. What? 
she got one of my emails banned. She used my email to open an account, and then she got banned. <laughs> what did and she then get? Now wait, she wait, has wait, another. Wait, let's back up here. What did she get banned for? Yeah. Violating community practices or whatever they call it. Wait a minute. She's a six-year-old girl. Exactly. <laughs> Is that the problem? problem? Yeah. Well, and she's doing a hoochie coochie dance. Yeah. Yeah, like the hoochie coochie. Yeah, she has the account. I says account warning. Account warning down here already. Really? Yeah. And did it yeah. say what it was based on? Community guideline violation. <laughs> well, that that doesn't say a lot. She can't even say the words. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. So and then they block it, so I can't see what it is. So yeah, she's just following TikTok, and they, TikTok has these, you know, these videos, and she's following. How do you them put on. a video on TikTok? It's really yeah, it's easy. Just add, and then you oh yeah, do whatever yeah. You yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Just oh, add. Right. When I come to see you, I'll show you. I'll open an account for you. No, all the, all these <laughs> wait well. minute, all these TikTok videos. See, I don't know how to operate this. All these talk TikTok videos are very short, aren't they? They are. Okay. And, yeah. There's no way to watch them in further uh, at further length. No. Oh, so okay. I was mistaken. It's not the FTC. It's the FCC wants TikTok gone. The commissioner of the FCC asked Apple CEO Tim Cook and Google CEO, somebody or other, uh, to remove TikTok from their app stores. Why? I mean, and, 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 you know, the FCC is getting too much of a sense of what their power is. They don't have yep, that kind of yep. power. They don't yeah, have people can get around it. With wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The FCC has no power over Apple. <laughs> well, they asked. They didn't order. So. Oh, they asked. It said that TikTok is 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 got is is uh, because of Adrian, right? That's <laughs> it. No, it's it, be, because of facial recognition, voice prints, text. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I bet Facebook collects all this stuff too. You know? Oh, sure they do. Yeah. Uh, who who does it? Were you saying, uh, um, Steve? Facebook, they track you all the time. Yeah. yeah, and so now we're mm -hmm. having a cow because TikTok's a Chinese-owned company. A, on an ad exactly. once exactly. For, yeah. for a watch. Yeah. After that, I got nothing but ads for watches. Yeah, oh, yeah. well, that, that no, that, that, that's something that they're pass, trying to pass a, uh, uh, they're trying to pass something in Congress to make it impossible for these companies to do that any longer. Um, uh, because what happens is you look up something like, I don't know, uh, 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 Alex Bennett's ramble. Uh, well, or something, you know, and then they will uh, start sending you emails and videos and things like That's that. How they make that, money. Yeah. Uh, and what they're doing is they're using the, your data. Data mining. It's not really data mining. That's, that's something it? else. Uh, okay. But they are using your data uh, to then specify, you know, what commercials you should get and so on and so forth online. Now, my question is, you're getting this service for free. Mm -hmm. So what is your, how are you paying for it? Well, maybe you're paying for it with that data. Maybe. And if Isn't they don't, the and if they don't, if they can't, if they can't use that data, then why should they give you the service for free? That's right. Isn't that the way Facebook works? You get it for free. Well, I'm and they that's what I'm talking about is Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah, In sp uh, specifically. But, you know, I mean, uh, uh, YouTube, for instance, I put my shows up on YouTube. I get a little bit of money for it, but it's not really what I should get considering the amount of work that I put into it and all of that. Uh, but they, you know, they're giving me their entire service for free. If I want to go somewhere else and pay to have the video on, it's going to cost me a hundred bucks a month. You know, so I mean, of course I'm giving the uh, giving it away. You know, so. Uh, but but all I'm saying is that when you look at somebody like Facebook and they take your your information and they sell it to other people. Well, you know, come on, you're getting the service for free, and if you don't want them to do that, then don't go be, don't go on Facebook. 
Yep. Yeah, but I Googled when I was looking for a ring for her. And then all of a sudden it started popping up on Facebook and I'm like, what the hell? Because <laughs> then you have to go in there and say, you know, hide this. And it says, why? I said, already purchased. Because then all of a sudden here keeps popping up and she's going, why are rings popping up on your Facebook? You know, Whoa. all the advertisements. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I find with Google, I mean, do you ever, you ever, anybody here use YouTube? I do. Oh, yeah. All yeah. the time. Oh, I mean, I'm a big fan. I sit there all day and just surf YouTube. But if I go in and I say, uh, oh, I was looking yesterday for, because I have positional uh, uh, vertigo. Vertigo. Okay. So I'm looking for these in exercises for positional vertigo. Now every other YouTube that comes up is for positional vid uh, uh, vertigo until I suddenly start looking for something else. Yeah. You know. So, I mean, but I'm getting the service for free. Well, actually, I'm paying for YouTube, excuse me, because I'm, I'm buying it without commercials. So, you know. Uh, yeah, like Adrian uses my phone all the time when we're going somewhere. She'll use it sometimes. And then, so you look at mine, and I have all these kids' cartoon stuff <laughs> mixed in with your show, mixed in with some McLaren stuff, mixed yeah. in with, yeah, know, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian, Brian, there's a clue here. Buy her own phone. Mm -hmm. I gave her my old phone and she lost it two times. Well, she lost it, she oh. found it. And I think she left it on the ship. Oh, yeah. A couple more years from now, she'll have a cow when she loses the phone. Yeah. Well, she'll just expect him to buy her another one because yeah. she's daddy's girl. Yep. <laughs> and like a sucker, he'll buy her one. Yep. She's probably got an iPhone 13, his old phone. Yeah. Uh, are you practicing, by the way, with a baseball bat? Because she's coming on seven. And by the time she hits 10, you're going to have to have that baseball bat by the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Phil and Alan are going to teach him some uh, skills. And who knows what kind of guy she's going to attract if she keeps doing that hoochie coochie dance. <laughs> but she's terrific. She's terrific, and I think yeah, I think you ought to have a half hour of her dancing, you know, huh? instead, sure instead of Phil job. Meyer. There you go. She doesn't get a job at eighteen at Southern Comfort. <laughs> uh, there's a light behind you, Steve. I didn't recognize you. Yeah. Oh, it says Trucker Steve on the road again. Hey, that's great. Your kidneys are. Back to working, or what's going on? Well, didn't you? Oh, didn't you weren't sorry. listening at the beginning? <laughs> no, I, I was listening to Steve Kravitz run over ten minutes, and then realized something must be wrong. Yeah. Well, anyway, he uh, no, he's he's doing local trucking. Okay, good. So he can good go stop. get his, you know, get his uh, what do you call it? His uh, uh, dialysis. Dialysis, and he can also work, which is good because you like you like trucking, don't you, Steve? Well, it's better than disability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disability in Canada only pays twelve hundred dollars a month. That's it. And trucking pays what? So that, I'll tell you something. That's better than it pays here in Cal in the United States. Yeah. Oh, definitely. What is this? Still not enough. What? Still not enough. It doesn't even pay rent up here. Well, of course, and if it doesn't pay rent up there, it don't pay rent down here. You know. Well, they, they also have uh, socialized medicine, and we have to pay for our medicine. What? By the way, let me ask you, uh, 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 Alan, what uh, what do they pay for disability? Do you know down here? Uh, I, you know, a friend of mine's on disability, got injured on the job a few months ago, hurt his back, and he's getting like... Uh, half of what his income was so i think i think he's getting like a thousand thousand dollars a month or eight hundred dollars yeah. a month something like that and yeah. that the fun thing is is they tax you on it at the end of the year oh. now, let me ask you this can you still get disability while driving the truck or do you, um, do you stop getting the disability i am getting it right now but i'm gonna probably cancel it yeah or at least yeah. yeah. Because you should be able to earn a lot more, more hours, and then right. 
Yeah. Because that's the problem with welfare in this country. If you make so much, you can't get welfare. But it's so it's more worth it to stay on welfare than to go out and get a job. There's no there's no exit ramp for you know for people it, who are on welfare. The, wel the welfare system. If you have more than twelve hundred dollars in your in the bank or anything, including a car, mm -hmm. um, you can't you don't qualify for welfare. Hmm. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, it's an yeah. outrageously amount of low money, and how anybody can survive, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we're we're ready to hit the food bank up the street. I'm sure. You know. I heard you just got a lease. Yeah, we got a lease. Yeah. But uh, I, I, it's funny. I mean, uh, the food bank up the street probably. I mean, I don't know. I went, I went to the store today, and I bought some chicken for tomorrow. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, How these much? wonderful chicken breasts. Four chicken breasts, 16 bucks. Oh, I told you. He yeah. needs you to yell like me and stuff, probably. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's a lie. Well, I'm not blaming it on Biden. The poor guy's got COVID, for <laughs> Christ. blame somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but that's crazy. You guys got, you guys got the bad inflation down what? there? What? You guys got really bad inflation down there? Oh, yeah. Like we have oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, the, I mean, the worst uh, since it's, 1972. Believe it or not, Steve, it's all over the world. Yeah. You know. Well, up here for gas, we were paying over $2 a liter, which in U.S. gallons is almost 10 bucks. Oh, yeah. oh I thought it would be $8. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Charlie, Good thing you guys got, make so much Charlie's money. been on the road, by the way. He knows what gas yeah. prices are here. And every state I've been in, Texas, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, they're all under $4 a gallon. Really? Under. Yes. Under $4 a gallon. I've never, a whole trip, I haven't paid more than $4 wow. a gallon. Wow. Three fifty nine dollars in Tennessee. Well, it has been going down considerably. In fact, inflation's been going down, I hear. Well, they're raising interest rates. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But inflation is going down, and uh, uh, it's getting it's getting a little bit better. You know. Well, see how good the Fed is. You raise interest rates, you stand a chance of putting the country into a recession. Well, mm -hmm. whatever. Who who knows? It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, but it, it it's pretty expensive. I mean, Marjorie buys me steaks at uh, at at uh, Stu Leonard's. Ooh. And she gets these steaks that cost about sixteen bucks. They're really very good. They're they're T bones and they're very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, she bought some today. They're suddenly twenty four dollars. Wow, that's a big jump. I mean, meat has just gone. Yeah, sky high. It is you know. crazy. Yeah. Phil played a joke on me, Alex. He told me you got mugged when you left the building. I was like, what? I got mugged. Yeah, he says, how did he get mugged? I just, we, we, he says, I'm joking, you didn't get mugged. He was playing a joke. <laughs> yeah, no, I, what do you mean I got mugged? He said he got mugged, hit over the head or something. This is mugged. when you fell, one of the times that you fell, Phil was spreading around it. Hmm. You got you got mugged and, and, and the guy knocked you to the ground. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so, well, I'm not, so I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just fine. Uh, but uh, I, uh, uh, God, I've just been today. I'm really kind of really tired. And, tired? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was I figured maybe I was coming down with COVID again. But mm -hmm. nah. Jeff is depressed right now. TikTok, he's having trouble getting on. I, I went to my dentist today and she said, Well, we haven't seen you in a while. And I said, There's a reason for that. And she yeah. says, What have you heard? I said, Have you heard of COVID? You know, and I'm, I don't want to travel uh, downtown. I, I'd like to be able to take a subway, but I'm not taking a subway to go anywhere. And, uh, and she says, yeah, but, you know, you got to have your teeth clean. And we got to, like, if we find a small little cavity, yeah. we ha it, it's only a small cavity oh, now to fill. Geez. But then it could cost you a fortune if it has to be root canal. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm root, about ready to yeah. go. Don't you, what don't you understand about COVID, you they know, and the fact that I'm 82 fucking years old. At least your problems is a cavity, Tom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. I'll play Frank Chance with but, the But, you know, and then she goes, and then you got a little thing bothering you over here, huh? Well, you know, that might be uh, might be an infected uh, root canal. And I'm going, oh, good. What are you doing? You're adding up the bill now. <laughs> you like, you know, yeah. it's like I go in for a cleaning, and what they do is they start hunting for gold, you know? And, and uh, oh, yeah, they do the x-rays, right? Oh, yeah, we got to look at the x -ray. Oh, there, that doesn't look good. Hey, you know, you could... And then I said to her, I need a new crown over here. And she didn't even pay attention to that. <laughs> and I'm going, that crown, you could make uh, you could make about $1,500, $1,800 off that fucking crown if you want to put it in. You know, and she goes, well, we might have other stuff. She's probably looking at other stuff that's more expensive. I hope you Oh, hey, look who comes here. Here, here comes uh, uh, Phil Meyer. He can't stay away anymore, can you, Phil? <laughs> you created a monster, Frankenstein's monster. No, so I far. created a monster with you, You created Tony. a monster? I yeah, but... hey, Tony's spreading fake news. He called what me this you? morning, and he <laughs> says to me, did you hear Biden just died? Oh, I did say that, yeah. yeah. And so and I, I said, no, he's got COVID. I said, it just broke. Two seconds. And then a couple hours later, I call him, and I said, did Shecky call you? He says, what do you mean? I said... Alex just got mugged. What? <laughs> and so, you know, I, 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 if he, he, he hands it out, I give it back. You know. Yeah, he We're trying to figure out how they got you. How can they get him? You must have got him on the, into the Uber, I told you, Phil. He doesn't really take a train. It's uh, that 20 feet walk, Alex. He went from so, the you know, I had to tell him I was kidding, but, uh, you know. Wow. New York is getting really bad. You can't go from one end from the... From the curb to the thing, it's getting bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't believe how good this new camera is I got. It's clear. This is like, mm. I, I, I have four of these goddamn uh, 4K Brios, right? They're about 150 a piece now. And uh, this is better than those. And it, it, this isn't, uh, isn't 4K. You know, looks great. Looks terrific, yeah. you know. And of course, my spiffy new background. I like that. Hmm. Anyway, so hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? You know, I noticed uh, the background didn't match uh, uh, during uh, Stephen Kravitz. Uh, no, because that was done a couple of weeks ago, yeah. or about mm -hmm. a week ago, before I had created this background. Yeah. I, well, I, I like it. Oh, yeah. It's really, really nice. Uh, yeah, the couch looks green today. It does? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what happened. I, uh, I, you only got a call from today? Was, we're gonna ha I'm going to have him on the show. He, I asked him if he would come do the show, and he said sure. And uh, a lot of you might not know who I'm referring to if I refer to him, but his name is David Patterson, uh, former governor of the state of New York. Oh wow. yeah, is he the blind governor? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he has been a fan of mine over the years, and he's been trying to get a hold of me, but he lost my phone number. How can you list it? Uh, uh, no, I'm not. Oh, oh you're maybe not I, maybe I am. If he's blind, what difference is? Oh wait, mean? yeah, that's true. We're on the phone now. Well, he's maybe not. He's not he, you know, he's not 100 percent blind. I mean, he can. Uh, look at a check this way and see how oh, really? much it is although he, he when we, we went out to lunch he actually had a lot of faith in marjorie because he said here uh fill, put uh, add the add the tip and add it up for me would you and we, she's going gee he really trusts me to give him the right amount of tips so <laughs> she gave a hundred percent tip to the waiter so anyway but no, is that he, the way they did the budget in New York when he was governor? Anyway, he's, 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 <laughs> it just added up. He's a big, a good he's a big monkey yeah. muck in the Democratic Party. And uh, he's going to come on and we're going to talk about stuff. And the first thing he said to me is, you know, since we talked last, this world has really gone to hell, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, he says, when we were kids, he was talking about he and I, he said, we used to be like, you know, he said, when we were radicals back in the 60s, we were <laughs> radical, you know. We did things. We we forced change. He said the the people today they go they march, but they don't do anything. They're not proactive like they should be. And so he, I, you'll, you're gonna like hearing from him. He's a great guy, just a great guy. And, uh, and 
I tried to get a hold of him when uh, when uh, uh, Cuomo was having all those problems, and I got a hold of him, but I never got anything back from him. And he said he got the message, and he read it, and then he promptly lost it and didn't have my phone number, and finally had a guy he could get it from recently. So anyway, you'll like him. He's a good guy. Good guy. I, uh, mm -hmm. well, I like him because he's a fan. So, you know, it makes it fun. Uh, but, uh, and he also, he comes from a big political family. His father was, uh, uh, was da uh, ba Basil Patterson. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Who was a, a, a congressman, I believe, in New York. So, uh, anyway. Anybody watch the uh, hearings tonight? Mm -hmm. I did a little bit. I did. I slept through them. His father was his father was a state senator. State senator, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it right yeah, now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I I fell asleep uh, during it. When I woke up, I came. I, I kind of got this horrible feeling about it. And, and Phil will love me for saying this, but I don't don't think I'm going over to your going over to the dark side, <laughs> Phil. But I just, you know, I just feel that it, it, it just is coming off as too much of a lynch party. You know, everything may be true. Everything may be true, but they should be presenting it in slight, I don't know how, but in a slightly different fashion so they, the people, people don't get that perception. I mean, it, it, it's, it's one-sided because the Republicans wouldn't allow any of their people to be part of that committee. Hold on, Phil. To be part of that committee and the only two who would have now been considered, you know, uncooperative by the Republican mm -hmm. establishment. Yep. But I would have liked to have seen a few more if they were willing to do it there, but nobody was willing to do it. Um, I'm sure everything that they said tonight is true, and I believe it, but I, I, I'm worried about the perception that people who are in the middle are gonna have on this whole thing. Uh, do you agree with that, Brian? You look like you're nodding yes. No, but I, I I understand what you're saying. If people <clears throat> who are sort of in the middle of there, if they make it look like it's a lynch mob, you know, yeah. then I mean, all have... any Democrat who watches that tonight who hates Trump is going to go, "Yay, good for our side," you know, and all the people mm -hmm. on the and Republican side are going to go, "It's a lynch mob," and the people yeah. in the middle though are the ones who've got to who've got to come up with the the predominant opinion. And I don't know how those people are going to react to what they saw tonight because it was all kind of one-sided, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, but did you watch that on MSNBC? Marjorie was watching it on MSNBC, which, if you watch it long enough, will rot your brain. <laughs> I think I think the hearings ought to be behind closed doors. Well, they are some of them. Yeah, but they they shouldn't be this day-to-day -day stuff we why do we need to know this uh, uh, they even take take out time for a 10-minute commercial break in the middle of it i think that's wonderful yes phil you were going to say uh, something. you are you aware that every one on that panel uh, had voted for uh impeaching trump i'm sure they did because they were democrats and democrats almost unilaterally and including Including the two Can Republicans. You? Yes, but they when when they were making up the committee, they didn't say we don't want Republicans that didn't want to impeach Trump. Well, they, they, they said we're opening it up to anybody you'll send us, and they wouldn't send them anybody. Well, mm -hmm. I believe they sent them Jim Jordan and a couple of others that were. I think what very... they didn't want are asshole grandstanders. They wanted well, people who were. I mean, like people that disagree with them. No. Jim Jordan. Well, Jim is Jordan big, disagrees he's with him. He's a big asshole grandstander. But he's qualified. I mean, he that, will somebody tell him that when you show up to the Congress, you should Jim wear a Jordan jacket? Jim Jordan is like inviting Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yeah. He, no, it, it, uh, he doesn't. Never wears a jacket. Doesn't he have any respect for the Congress? You know, with a thirteen percent approval rating for Congress, maybe he doesn't need any respect. Well, they're not voting on the wardrobe. Hey, you know, uh, I, I have a question. You were talking about your judge being threatened and uh, undue influence mm -hmm. uh, in your. Uh, well, I don't really want to get into case. that, but what? No, I understand, but I, what I was thinking about when you were saying that 
was the undue influence that the protesters were trying on Kavanaugh and Barrett. How and about the undue influence that Trump was doing on members of yeah. Congress? How about it's a whataboutism? Uh, you know, I asked you, you know, I, you know, you have this opinion on the judge and you feel that the undue influence was wrong. But on these judges that are deciding important cases, Phil, uh, that Phil, undue influence to begin with, was okay. To begin with, they have a job for life. Okay. What's uh, the difference? And, and I think people have a right to protest them because they have, we're talking about, in this case, in my case, the judges in civil cases and in criminal cases, you aren't talking about judges. We're judging on the constitutional people, merits people of something. People have a right to protest, and going down to the Supreme Court would have been a legitimate way of protesting, but you know, trying to intimidate them at their homes, their families, restaurants, things like that. Well, I then, don't think then they, should, they should not get listed in the phone book. Yes, Jack Bishop. Hey, two I know, that's quick. why you don't. It is in the phone book. So. Two, two things real quick. One, who knows anybody that's in the middle today? That's a good question. Who Malcolm. knows? Middle meaning? Yeah, TV middle show. politically. I, I would think I am, actually. I don't oh, think no, you are. No, 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 you're not, Tony. You're just stupid. Well, <laughs> still in the middle though <laughs> the lost soul well that's oh, where okay. that's where stupid goes the middle oh. uh, there, there are people that don't care <laughs> either that or voting for trump if they that's don't a, care a, phil they got no right to say a damn thing about anything oh but when they don't care they call your show <laughs> i wish they would yeah i know uh, no, there there are people in the middle. There are people that are not affected one way or another, uh, uh, that don't like one side or the other, and that feel that there's too much polarization. Yeah, listen, the, America has always been a polarized Well, no, country. but I feel there's too much polarization, and I don't think there's anything you're going to do about it, Phil, and you're guilty of that same polarization. Not really. I yes, just su are. I support my side, but I'm I'm perfectly When's happy. When's the last time you agreed with a Democrat? Uh, I like Tulsi Gabbard, Gabbard, and I would vote for her. Look, let's 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 get something straight about these parties. They're like private clubs. Yeah, that's what they are. They, you know, whether it's left or right, they're all the same thing, really. Uh, I voted for uh, what's his name, uh, Brown, Jerry Brown. Uh, for mayor, uh, and I voted for him for attorney general. That was a mistake, but uh, I voted for him tw uh, for mayor of Oakland, and he was a great. But if you had to, if you had to pick you a lived private in club, Walnut Creek you lived time. in Walnut no. Creek. <laughs> not when I, not when I lived in the Oakland Hills. But in 2015, I moved to Walnut Creek. Oh, but okay. from 2005 Phil, to 2015, Phil, lived, I lived in lived Berkeley. These parties as private clubs. Which one would you be in? Um, Come on, be honest with me now. Don't lie to me. Don't uh, lie the to The Bohemian yourself. Club. Jesus. <laughs> Phil, I like Phil will never club. give you a straight. It, whenever no, Phil. No, 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 well, hey, the Bohemian no. Club is a club. Whenever you, Phil doesn't have an answer or doesn't um, want to answer, he will then make a joke. I, I, I would not, I would not side with the Democrats. I believe that they're just so, feeding at the trough. So there, you picked your side, and who feeds at the trough more than the Republicans? Well, they both feed at the trough. All right. Maybe I'm in the middle. So, in the middle of what? In the <laughs> middle of the shit. But, <laughs> if you're in the middle, we're all in trouble. Okay. Yeah, well, right. You know, I'm probably the only one uh, that thinks straight here as far as, uh, you know, realizing that there are certain things that are going on in today's government that are bad for America. And Do you I, think I, that the rest of us don't think the same thing? We just disagree. I don't know, but why... You, 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 you would trade. Question. Look, ask are, me a question. Come on, I asked you. Okay. Ask me a question on any topic, and I'll give you my answer. How do you feel about the porous border in Texas? How do I feel about the porous border in Texas? This state was once a part of Mexico. Well, you know, a and bunch of Kentuckians time... and Tennesseans came down here, stole this state from Mexico, so they could bring black folks like me down here and get away with continuing to enslave us for another hundred years. How do you really feel? 
No, but he's got a great point there, Phil. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Uh, Absolutely. You know, that was then. This is now. I'm talking and, and, about 2022. And history history oh. affects current. Yes, current so history. Always, 2022. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you want to know. talk about the poorest border, how we have how, a million how, people Phil, got Phil, away, Phil, a million Phil, got away that are in this Phil, country right now. Phil, if you want to talk about porous borders, look at all those Canadians we let in here. That is that. Yeah, really. <laughs> that is. You know, I, I watch this um, uh, this show on uh, and uh, it's it's a, a thing on the border um, and. In the, in the Canadians, they don't take any BS. You want to go to Canada and you got, you know, some of that hash oil that you guys smoke in the, uh, in the things. They I smoke arrest hash you. oil? Well, what whatever, the, the, the marijuana oil. shit that you put in the electronic cigarettes. It probably causes nystagmus too, huh, Phil? Yes. And, you know, uh, and, you know for DUIs, we're only interested in... in Horizontal. It just built. Well, the reality is, America Sorry. has always been willing to let people in if they work for jack shit. That's, you know, you've got well, every excuse under about. the sun. No, no, that's my reasoning. Give me, give me an answer back. Well, be bold, yeah. be brave. There is always a group, whether it was the Jews in the 1880s. They'll find some way about Irish, dragging it over into the ditch. Or, or, or the Watch Irish, out. or uh, the Italians. Uh, they, but they assimilated. They learned. You know the why English they assimilated, Phil? Because they had to. No, you know why they, they assimilated. Wanted to be There's Americans. one only one reason why those groups yeah, were able yeah, to they, assimilate. They wanted to be Americans. No, That's there was only one reason. They were yeah. all white. Try being black and assimilating. What, what about try the being Mexican and assimilating? Try yeah, being yeah. 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 Well, let me tell you, there's they're all of white. All the assimilated. ones you mentioned, the Irish and the Jews, and so we all had white skin. We yeah, could we okay. could pass for anything well, we wanted to pass. If you want to bring up assimilation, as soon as my ancestors got off the boat, we had to learn your language. There is no remnant of any indigenous African language spoken anywhere in this country, except off of some islands. Off the uh, North Carolina, South Carolina coast. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Phil's hey. language can't pronounce nuclear, so the word. Well, yeah. I, uh, look. Well, I have uh, trouble with that one too. You know, you you're you're claiming that uh, you got a raw deal. A lot of people got a raw deal. Oh, uh, but this long? is 2022. For how long? And let me tell you, we right. had the president of the United States Phil, in 2008 Phil, was Phil, black. Phil, Phil. Shut up a that's second. That's got that's got shut, not a both damn of you. Shut thing up a do. second. Shut up. Uh, uh, shut up a second. Just like your argument doesn't have a damn can thing I, to do about hey, the forest Hey, it's my quarter. show. Can I talk? Yeah, yeah. I just oh, finished my, uh, uh, my jab at I, Jack. I mean, you know, I mean, there you go. You know, you go uh, 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 talking about oh, why couldn't you bring yourself up by your bootstraps? You know, the reason was because blacks could. All right, they just absolutely couldn't. No matter how I don't believe they, that they freed the slaves, but they never freed them. Well, I don't okay. believe that. I look All at right. men like Colin Powell, uh, Obama, and and a number of others that. And you know, if you okay. if you look at the military, uh, there there are plenty. It, color was not an issue. All right. Color okay. Now name two really black guys you like. Best <laughs> uh, football players. Uh, Phil, have you ever heard of the Talented Ten? The Talented Ten? Yeah, no, I can't talented say that. Talented Ten, Ten, like ten percent. No, I, I can't say that. We're talking have. about guys like Colin Powell, Barack Obama. Mm. I, I could go down the list. We were talking about guys like that. How about Clarence Thomas? One hundred and fifty years ago. We yeah, were, well, you know, now, and here's what, and here's what we're talking about. This is what we were talking about amongst ourselves, that there would always be 10% of us who would do better for some reason. Could be, in the case of my family, could be because we were the illegitimate children of the folks that owned my great, great, great grandmother, a man who was German, who never denied that that boy was his boy and who made it possible for me to go to college. Because he gave his son some money 
and said, buy land. Well, you know, not everybody gets that kind of break. Not My father died when I was 17. Now, now, but, but hey, but hey, but hey, suppose, suppose, now remember, he didn't give that boy that money when he was born in 1846. He had to, he didn't get that money until after okay, the Civil we're, War. We're, we're getting into it. I, look, I, my father died when um, I was 17. My father died. When I, I moved out the- here with two thousand dollars in my pocket and a little bit of knowledge about how to install carpet, and uh, I've been oh, doing that good for, for you, Phil. over 40 years. What? Good for uh, you. Now you know it's not like when I came here. Something. I came here with nothing, and I managed. I to walked tr- through the snow five miles to go to school. <laughs> <I'd> be, <laughs> how many black businessmen do you know, Phil? Well, there was uh, the guy from Godfather Pizza, nine nine nine. Uh, what was right, it? No, no, I mean guys like you, small guys. Plenty. I mean, all right, ask them if they've ever been able to get a bank loan. Well, you know, Come I'm on. sure they I, have. I, 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 you know, you've never asked them. I challenge you to ask somebody and come back and tell me what. Okay, you I got a guy that does my carpet binding. All right, and uh, he, he's black. <laughs> And, uh, Hi, Brian. How you doing up there? And, you know, I'll ask him. <laughs> ask him. And, you know, you know, and Phil, and if you do, let's say you do have this percent of of that. We're in California, where it's very diverse. Sure. You go everywhere else, and that percentage of that just shrinks everywhere, right? And it's and it's true but, for every group that is not Anglo in this country. The Anglo groups don't have ninety percent success. I didn't There's say There's probably 10% they have of that. a better chance at it, Phil. I, you Come know, on, you're going to tell me so. you're going to tell me that your white skin didn't give you a certain pass. I don't think it so. It gave me, I, it gave me a pass. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. as soon as found out I was Jewish, it was <laughs> I, you know, know. I mean, Jack may have done better than I did in this business if he were white. Because he's a very uh, talented guy. I had might have been somebody. The last job I had in San Francisco radio, 1967, when I turned in my resignation, my program director, a name that Alex will know, Bob Postel, who was PD at KMPX before Tom Donahue. Mm -hmm. Postel said, you know, when I hired you and played your tape for the manager and owner they said guys great when you showed up black (laughs) i had to reinforce now wait a minute this is the same guy you heard Hmm. what's the issue they said well 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 gee we uh 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 you know uh we uh we heard yeah (laughs) and that was on the way out don't you think times have changed somewhat, Jack? Uh, oh, uh, things have changed, but, you know, I mean, I remember those days. And in those days, there was no more segregated business than the radio business. You had black radio stations and you had white radio stations. And by the way, the black radio stations were run and owned by whites, but, uh, oh, yeah. it, but there was a segregation then. Segregation in movies. There was a black film industry and a white film industry, and you probably know nothing about the black film industry because, well, you never got a chance to see pictures by Oscar Michaud and by Spencer uh, Williams, who later went on to play Andy on Amos and Andy. He was one of the great directors in black films. Um, You know, so, I mean, this has always been a very segregated country, and only recently, I think, have... Have, have blacks gotten a leg up, but only a certain level of blacks have gotten a leg up, you know? If you play basketball or you do rap, you do fine, you know? What about education? Well, I'll tell you this about education. There have always been educated black people. And they've been successful. Not necessarily. Not all of them. Hmm. There are a lot of black people who, I mean, you go back to that black film industry I was talking about, and you had a director like Oscar Michaud, who's maybe one of the greatest directors of all time, and you never heard of him. And the reason you never heard of him is because he was black. And he had Just to like my earlier question, that was then and this is now. Well, the thing is, if you look at it, sure, I'm not saying that things aren't better, 
I'm saying how much better could there have been if after the Civil War, mm -hmm. instead of folding like the United States did during Reconstruction and letting those white Southerners that had been proven traitors mm -hmm. run things again in the South, how mm -hmm. much better would my great-great-grandfather have done? And, and we thought that we're divided now. No, we're not think, divided. Now we're as divided as we've ever been. Yeah, well, you know, think about it. The, uh, All right. the, the, only, the, only thing, the, only, the only thing that bothers me is that I think the blacks actually have a better leg up these days, whereas still other races are lagging behind. Exactly. But it's because, the Chinese. as Black said, we're not going to take this crap any longer. And they, you know, and they've managed to advance uh, their lot in life. But right. the you fact is right. that you, you, Mexicans still have the problem. Brian, Jeff, go ahead. Brian. I, I say, I say the the bad thing about that whole pendulum that's swinging is now it's swinging so far in big business for diversity and inclusion that now we start looking at. I know I won't say my company. I'll say I know my friends' companies. They have that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's, it's almost like the football stuff. You know, they have to be able to interview so many percentage of minorities now and women now that we're not going back to we haven't straightened that up to say hey who's the best person for that position here we're going we haven't been hiring all this we've been bringing all these minority and women down so much now that pendulum is swinging and now this whole diversity and inclusion for all these companies and it's like now we have to hire those and we're going back to you know why aren't we hiring the, the best day people when we will have true inclusion is the day when we never say go out and hire a black person go exactly. out and hire a mexican exactly go look at the police departments when, when, around the country police departments are well, being forced to uh hire uh on being forced you're, 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 they shouldn't be forced phil they should do yeah. it of their own volition well, if you're if you're white and you want to become a cop that's the, you, you're probably not going to get the job unless you're a star but if you're a woman, and if you're a gay woman, and if you're a black gay woman, you you're you're in. Phil, Phil look at let, go back and look at the pictures of of cops standing all in front of Richmond PD. In the '60s, they were all white. In the '70s, they were all white. Nowadays, hey, Phil, it's different. I'm going to tell Phil black something, cops. then I'm going to run. In 46 years in broadcasting, I was never recruited by any station other than two black owned companies every general market job i got i knocked on the door and got on my own i'll tell you one other thing jack uh i have a friend that's over 50 in the radio business and he can't get a job because of his age and he's well, white well that's that's true also and and, and ah, he was but, just in, inducted into the uh, the uh, Country Music Hall of Fame. Well, and, well I'm going to end with this because i got to do a program. Okay. And he I can't get a job. Well, well neither can no. I, Phil. Right. Well, yeah. you didn't we're, play we're, country we're music. An, we're an ageist. We're an ageist. Yeah, of, an ageist industry. Yeah. So what yeah. is the difference between right. uh, right. a white right, guy... Phil, quit monopolizing the conversation. Well, 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 too late for me I'm to gonna, say that. I'm going to leave you guys with this. The most discriminated group in America, Native Americans. I agree with you. No, no mm -hmm. question there. Anyway, yeah. thank you, Jack. You better get going because you got to do a show. Hey, Steve, oh. thank you so much for joining us. Good to see you back behind the wheel. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 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 Brian, good to see you, and of course your lovely ventriloquist dummy, Adrian. <laughs> Tiffany's aunt is here from L.A. She's a Trumper like crazy. Oh, well, <laughs> I wouldn't even let her stay in the Fourth house. Fourth of July had the Trump hat on and everything. Oh, my God. She's staying in that room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah look, there's Elmer Fudd. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Charlie Wallace, always a pleasure. <laughs> kind of quiet tonight, but it's okay. I love, just love having you here. And uh, uh, safe driving, by the way, when you start driving back thank home. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tony. Thank you, uh, uh, Alan. Thank you, Phil, for this little uh, treat. And, of course, to Jack Bishop for joining in. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay? There, we, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just put them uh, to an end here. Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. 
and, and uh, he will be here taking your calls. But instead of doing it on Zoom, he's going to be doing it on Skype, and it's going to be GabNet Live is the, uh, is the place you call. Anyway, I'll see you again uh, tomorrow, okay, for our final show of the week. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. <laughs>